Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today I'm going to show you how to master FL Studio 21 in minutes. The benefits of learning this is that I'm going to show you how to make beats a lot faster, how to record a lot faster, and make real songs in your DAW with no frustrations and no sticking points. So today I'm going to promise you that you're going to walk away with applicable knowledge if you don't know me, I'm Game from BusyWorksBeats.com. We train over 800,000 producers around the world. So I'm going to work with Drake, Kanye West, Post Malone, J. Cole, Trippy Red, Young Thug, Lil Baby, Polo G, if I didn't say that already, French Montana, Post Malone, if I didn't already say that. A lot of people on the Billboard charts is what I'm trying to say. So subscribe and like this video so we can help more and more people around the world. We're changing lives and I love it. My difference here at BusyWorksBeats.com is that I make stuff extremely simple. And the stuff that I teach, you know, I've been training music producers for a long time now. I know what to pay attention to and what not to pay attention to. So you're not learning everything about everything, which just makes everything more confusing. You're going to learn the things that you can actually apply right away to get the fastest results. I've done all the trial and error, so you don't have to. So without further ado, let us break down FL Studio 21. I'll break this down into chapters so you don't get lost. And if you want to learn more, just click the link below or just go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. There we'll have more explanation about FL Studio. Okay, so if you ever get lost in FL Studio, I have a little script here so I can follow along. If you ever get lost in FL Studio 21, there's five buttons. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. These buttons will help you navigate if you ever get lost. So if you're like, where did the window go? You can click one of these buttons and that window will return. Okay, so if you ever get lost, return to these five buttons. If you don't see those five buttons, go to view, go to where it says arrange windows, and then we're going to click where it says realign. This will reset FL Studio's uh, view. Okay, so let's go to the five uh, points up top and let's start with what's called the playlist. So the playlist has what are called patterns. Now think of patterns as like Lego pieces or puzzle pieces. The playlist is where you go to combine those puzzle pieces into a bigger picture. Okay, but a pattern is just a puzzle piece. It's not the entire picture, it's just the piece. Okay, so a pattern is a simple idea. So if you don't see these patterns, again, in the left side here on the left panel, you have to click on the little keyboard icon, then you'll see pattern one. If you're on these other tabs, they have different items. Okay, so pattern one, what can we do with this? We can right click, we could rename this, and let's name it piano, and let's give it a color. Okay, click here, you can get, uh, give it a color. If you don't see the full color wheel, click the lock icon to unlock all the colorations. And let's click uh, one of these and hit accept, and then hit enter again, and now we have a pattern called piano, a puzzle piece called piano. Now let's drag this puzzle piece into the actual playlist. Left click and just drag. Okay, now if I right click, you can see the color of the actual pattern. Now with patterns, you can left click and drag them, okay, to make them bigger or smaller. So if you're wondering where your MIDI is, sometimes the pattern isn't long enough, okay? So you just need to drag it out like this. Now there's another tab. Now I'll show you how to split different things. Uh, I'm, let me do it now just to show you how far we can take this. So basically, if you have different uh, MIDI, per sound and what's called a channel rack. We'll get to the channel rack. Don't worry about the term right now. What you can do with the pattern is right click and you could split by channel. So this is great for producers who like to make ideas all in one. They may map, like as a beginner, you may need to see everything. So you'll have your drums on the same pattern as your piano. I would recommend you separate stuff because if you start combining stuff, it'll get, there are little nuances. I don't want to get into everything. But I like to separate stuff. So when you're actually making your songs and making your beats, try your best to separate the sounds. You know, like piano on this one, melody on this one, chords on this one. Uh, different pattern will have your drums. Try to separate as much as you can early on because it's a good habit to have. Okay, but if you don't separate, what you can do is draw everything in one what's called pattern. And then you could right click over here and then go to split by channel. So what this means is it will create a pattern per sound that we had mapped out in that initial um, pattern. So it splits it up. So remember I had those three dots going in a diagonal. Now it has just that one sound, just the next sound, and then the third sound on a separate pattern. So now we can separate these and organize them a lot easier. This is great for song arrangement. And again, it's a good habit to have. So what does that mean? Now I can go to the patterns tab on the left side, left click and drag this in, and now I can move this around. So let's say you wanna create unique custom change-ups in your song. You could just left click and drop out things and bring things back in. Okay, so it's not everything on one pattern. It doesn't allow you that same option. Okay, you would have to make a lot of changes just to make a small change. So that's why I say it's a good habit to separate your sounds like that. We'll get into the application later. I just wanted to show you that function. 
And again, I'm following my little guidelines. So I don't go off on tangents. Um, a quick thing you could do is also right click. So let's say you're in a, the wrong key. You're in C minor, but you need to be in A minor. What you can do is right click or you can hit shift and left click to highlight multiple patterns. And you can right click and transpose those patterns. So this will only affect the MIDI uh, in the uh, piano roll. Okay, so now we're going to go down, let's say C minor to A is what? One, two, three, semitone. So let's do minus three, okay, in semitones to pull it down three notes. Okay, so you hit enter and then it transposes those notes down. So now, you know, visually, you'll see this later when we get into the application, but don't worry about it now. So that's for more advanced people if they need to transpose. Now let's talk about audio clips. I'm going to delete these patterns for now because we don't need them. So just right click and delete. Okay, there we go. Now we're back to nothing. All right. So with audio clips, which is this tab here, this is for anything you record. So let me quickly record my vocal just so we have some starting material. Don't worry about memorizing any of these steps. Again, if you want more, just go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. Let me record real quick so we have some audio. Testing, testing, testing. <laughs> okay. So now we have that. And once you record or have an audio clip, an audio clip can also be anything you drag into your um, your playlist. So for example, if I drag in a drum break from AJ, for example, and just drag it in like this, it will be considered an audio clip. Whereas if I open this up, and again, I'm just kind of jumping ahead, but if I open this up in a new channel, it will go into my channel rack. It's not an audio clip. It's not considered an audio clip. You can find it in what's called your channel rack. So a lot of people confuse the two. Um, so audio clips are only when you drag audio into your playlist. Okay, now here are some shortcuts I'm going to give you for audio clips. So let's say um, your audio somehow got like offset like this, like it's a loop or something like this, and it's just offset. And you're like, darn, how do I, or you're doing samples, even better. If you're a sample producer and you slice your sample like this and like this, but everything's kind of like off the uh, grid, what you can do is hit shift Q to quantize this stuff. Okay, so this, oh, I'm hitting option Q. I was wondering why it wasn't working. Okay, shift Q, and it will quantize to the beginning of the grid. So look, look close, young grasshopper. Okay, hit shift Q, and it will quantize to the beginning of your, your grid settings. Okay, so that will help you if you're making chops and samples and everything's kind of spread out. It will help you quickly um, fix that. Okay, so shift Q is a major, major, major key. Next is how to mute audio. So um, also you can go to the mute tool up here in the top left. It's the little speaker with the X over it. And let's say you like a sample. Testing, testing, testing. Let's say you, you just had a weird fumble at the end. You can mute it now with the mute tool so that it's testing, testing, testing. You can't hear it, okay? And then you can unlock it without deleting it. You can have it visually there, but you could just mute it so that it's not being played. This is great for when you do multiple takes of recordings and different things. Um, next, let's work on the time stretch. So you can see here when I chop the sample, there's a gap. So there's a quick, 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 quick way to time stretch. What you could do is, is double click on your sample and then you can go to the time knob and left click and drag it until it locks into the nearest grid. So in this case, I have it set to where now it's fixed, okay? Now, I'm trying to not tell you about everything because there's so much I could tell you, but when you're sampling, there's other functions that you could use, but that's basically how you time stretch. So it fills in that little gap that we had right here, okay? So I'm trying to hold my tongue from saying more, but that's for more advanced people. I was about to get really advanced. Okay, so let's say you now have a new audio. Testing, testing, testing. See how the pitch changed on me? Okay, so that's why I didn't want to confuse you guys, but let's create another pitch change. And let's do here, let's make this one unique. And let's double click. You can double click to go inside the actual sample window and make changes. And let's just make these random, two random pitches like this. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, so you make this change, but you want this to be one audio file. This is for loop makers or anybody who's into sound design or just wants a simple um, view. What you could do is highlight these and hit Control G. You can hit control G. I'm not sure if you heard the G part, but you can hit control G to now render that. So I just basically grouped those two audios into one audio file. So there's a lot of reasons why you would do that. Um, you know, it just basically it's like comp, -like, comp uh, recording. Uh, you could do it that way. Okay. So moving forward, we have the audio render or 
There's another way to do it. You click on where it says track. You can right click and consolidate tracks from track start or from song start. And this will render the file all the way through however long you have it set. Um, if you do have a loop set, it will like if I do this, I hit control left click on the top and then right click and consolidate. It says time selection. So this will change if you have a loop set. OK, so then you would right click and you go to where it is consolidate tracks from track start. And what I would recommend you guys do is change your tail to cut remainder. OK, there's a rare case where you will leave a remainder. I highly recommend you cut remainder. It just saves everybody a ton of headache. Go to wave. I keep mine on 16 bit. You don't need to worry about this. If you go to 32 bit, it basically just doubles in size. So it just takes up more space. So 16 bit stereo we have I have so all the settings you see here then hit start and it's the same process it's just going to render it to audio so what you can do is basically that process that I just showed you um, you would do that with MIDI so I'm trying not to jump so far ahead but basically you would do that with MIDI so let's go to pattern one let's draw in some notes and I'll show you the application here um, we are in the wrong setting so now you can kind of get a navigation if you get lost and you're like where's my sounds click up here and go to all Sometimes, I don't know why YFL has it sorted like that, but that's outset. Okay, now let's go into the piano roll. And let's say you want to convert your, your MIDI to audio. So this is why you would have to do it this way as opposed to just hitting Control G. Control G doesn't render to audio. That's It just combines the vocal, or excuse me, the audio clips into one. So to render to audio, you would right click, go to consolidate from track start. So this can convert MIDI into audio. And there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do that. Okay, so now I just took the piano that I just mapped out. Testing, testing, test. And it made it audio instead of these notes on the screen. Okay, so you could do a lot of things with that. I don't want to go too far, but that's basically what that's for. Um, now next is automation. So for example, I can double click. And in FL, you can pretty much automate a lot of stuff. There's nothing you can't really automate. Um, but let's say you wanted to automate the volume here. You could just right click, create an automation clip. Okay. And we'll, I have videos on automation, so just type in automation BusyWorks Beats because it's too much to explain in one video. But I'm just going to drag this out. So you see how this didn't really make it all the way to the end? I'm just going to drag this, okay? And we are going to just right-click the initial node and then copy that value just in case you move something by accident. Right-click and hit V to paste, okay? So now it has the exact beginning and ending uh, value. Or you could just right-click another point and then right-click paste the value. So working with automation, you got to be careful. I'll have a video about it. Um, I'm not going to remember to link it, but just type in automation BusyWorks Beats FL Studio. Okay. So with this, you can slice off the excess and now you just draw in what you want to change. So automation is basically the equivalent of telling the computer to move stuff over time. In real life, I can turn knobs, I can twist stuff. In the computer, it doesn't do that automatically. You have to tell it to do that. So we're going to tell it to start low and go high. Testing, testing, test. Actually, let's do the opposite. Let's do, let's fade it out. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, so this is creating a channel automation for the piano. And you can shape it by left clicking. Okay, I have a full video on automation. This will eat up too much time going over automation right now, but that's how you would do automation. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. Let's hit Control A to select everything. Control X on Mac. Um, allows you to, it, it, command is on Mac, <laughs> command X to get rid of stuff. Okay, following the guidelines here, I'm trying not to make stuff too complicated, but I'm just showing you how far you can take this stuff. Okay, so we went over rendering and uh, automation. Now let's move to tracks and renaming and muting. So I'm glad this happened because now you see these little arrows. What this does in FL Studio, when you start rendering things, it groups things. This is a new function. So if you see these up arrows and these little drop down things, you could right click and hit, I believe it's N to ungroup. So now that's not attached to that the, the uh, track above. If you want to group a track to the track above, right click and hit G to group. So now this is it's called nested or sitting under the track above. And what this allows you to do is just quickly hide that track so visually it doesn't eat up a lot of space. So when would you use this? Basically when you're recording a lot of takes and you have like 20 tracks just of different takes that you used, you could just compile them like background vocals and just group all of them and then nest them so that you're, they're not taking up a lot of screen space. So that's what you would do with grouping. Not really used a lot unless I'm recording. 
Um, also, you can rename track, so you can right click and hit R to rename. Let's call this piano. And you can also give it a color. So FL is very colorful. Uh, so right click, hit R, and then change the color. Let's make it blue. Hit enter. So now this thing is labeled blue. So now I know that's piano and it's blue. Okay. So moving forward and tracks, mute tracks and group tracks. Okay. So if you like a sound, but you just want to temporarily either solo it or mute it, you can click this little green dot to mute it. And if you want to solo something, you just right click on that green dot and it solos. Okay. So later when we get into the beat, I'll try to remember uh, to use that. Okay, so next we have the playlist tools. So in the playlist, I don't really use a lot of these tools. Okay, so I'm being honest with you. I use the paint tool for the patterns. So the paint allows me to arrange uh, different patterns. So let me show you what this looks like in context. So you're not just scratching your head. Okay, so what it allows me to do is just quickly left click and drag um, patterns out. So those puzzle pieces out faster. Okay, so it just quickly allows me to do that. That's why I use the paint tool when I'm in the playlist mode. Okay, also we have what's called a slice tool. So this is great for audio. So let me grab some audio here, like a drum break. And if I want to slice the drum break, what I can do is grab the slice tool and hit shift to do a vertical slice at the bar or the grid. If you want to move it to the in-between spot, see how it only kind of locks in when I hit shift and I left click. You can hit alt and shift. Option on Mac is alt. Hit uh, shift option on Mac or shift alt on PC and left click and you can do a very specific micro cut and nudge cut. So now I can slice anywhere in between. If you don't hit alt, it won't do that for you. OK, so in general, just FL Studio, whenever you hit alt, it allows you to nudge stuff. Whenever you hit shift, it usually means like you're moving stuff in chunks. OK, so that's the general uh, framework for that. OK, so we have the paint tool, the slice tool. Next is what's called a, the slide tool or the slip tool. And what you can do here is left click and drag the audio. So let's say you're like trying to make little glitches. Let's do this in real time so you can actually see what it sounds like. So this is at what 79 BPM. So let's left click and pull this down to 79 BPM so we could just keep on tempo. The reason I'm at 79 is because um, I want that to be um, on the grid. OK, so I'm going to left click and drag this out and let's make some chops. Now something changed about this, so let's figure out why it sounds that low. Maybe that's what it sounds like. Okay, that's just how low it is. Okay, so now I want to make slices, and let's grab the slip tool, make sure everything's lined up, and then grab the slice tool, and I'm going to hit shift. So you see how if I zoom in, this is actually played before the downbeat. You don't need to memorize what this means, but basically it's playing early. So I need to hit shift option or shift alt to slice it, before the grid mark, okay? And then let's make another slice over here. Zooming in, I'm using my trackpad or basically the Mac zoom in, but to zoom in, um, you could use these tools on the right side. I think you can mouse wheel zoom. I'm not sure for PC how to zoom in and out um, like the Mac, but that's how you do it on the Mac. Okay, so now that we have one, two, and let's make a little micro cut. So to get more microscopic, go to snap to grid and I keep my snap to grid on a bar. It's just easier to see. But if you need more micro increments, let's go to like a half beat. And let's say I want to change up the ending. I'm going to hit shift alt to do that vertical slice. And I'm going to make another cut right here. Shift alt. OK, so now that we have all these cuts, what I'm going to do now is show you how to remix this like a DJ. Go to the slip tool, which is this little left right arrow. And then I'm going to switch out the ending. So. Basically, if you keep your snap to grid on a specific increment, like a half beat, you can slip the audio in half beats. It will be quantized to however you have your snap to grid set. So I'm going to left click and drag this. So let's say I want that sound to repeat. I'm going to left click and drag it to the right so that it repeats what's on what's earlier in the audio. So this is how you create those glitches or like those lo fi change ups. OK, so I know I'm jumping ahead, but you can also grab the slice tool, hit shift alt left click to make that slice. And in FL Studio, there's something called make unique. It's not like Ableton where everything's treated separately. It treats even though we made cuts, it treats this whole audio like one audio, like one clip. 
So if I make a change over here, it will also change over here. You got to be careful with this. So what I'm going to do is make this unique as a sample because I only want, I'll tell you why later when we get into the sample series. If you want to learn more, go to the sample series. It's at premium.busyworksbeats.com. I show you how to make sample beats like Kanye and all those guys. So what we did now is just isolate just this cut. So if I open up, you'll see there's no more audio. And if I go to the left, which it doesn't have any anything to the left, there's no more audio. So I soloed the sound and I printed it as its own file, which allows me to now double click, go in and I can reverse it. So now we can create really unique change ups. So it goes. OK, so as this plays, let me find myself in the notes. OK, so zooming in and out, you can also use these. Um, you can left click on these little bar things in the top right to zoom like this and then grab the bar up top on the edge and go like this to zoom out. OK, so that's how you zoom in and out right there. And that's that. OK, so snap to grid um, is shift Q. So again, if your audio is kind of off the grid and you want it quantized, you can hit shift Q. So let me just visually show you what that would look like. So you see how this isn't mapped to the lines. You would hit shift Q to quantize that so that it's um, now in the lines. OK, so what else do we have? <laughs> OK, this is going to be a long video, but I'm going to separate it into sections. OK, so that's Snap to Grid, but you're going to learn everything about FL Studio 21. Let's move into patterns, make unique. OK, so. Oh, one more thing, Snap to Grid. I keep my Snap to Grid on bar mode. I would just highly recommend you keep it this way because it's just a lot easier, in my opinion. OK, so next we have patterns. Let's grab a pattern and left click and drag it into the playlist. Let's make like a Griselda dirty sound. Let's just drag this out. So this is why I like to separate sounds, because now I can work on the piano as it's playing in the actual song. So you see how I just took it from like one bar to two bars. So that's why I separate things. You could make changes in real time. OK, so now we have this. Now, what I want to do is let's say you want to make a small change. This is why I said try your best to separate sounds early on. What I can do now is hit shift left click and make this um, pattern a duplicate or copy the pattern. Or as long as it's quantized to the edges, you can hit what's called control B. So you can control highlight to select and then hit control B to what, do what's called a latch paste. OK, but don't get comfortable with latch pasting, because if I latch paste an offbeat sound, it's going to continue to be offbeat. See how this is not lined up to the grid at all. So control B is not paste. It's called latch paste. If you want to copy the timing of a sample, you hit shift and you left click. OK, this allows you to keep the actual timing. You see how it still has that little gap at the end. If I hit control B, like most people tell you to do, it's not going to have that gap. It's actually a different timing. OK, which is going to throw you off if you're using audio. OK, so that's a latch paste. I usually only use it for patterns because patterns are usually mapped out perfectly. OK, so what you can do with patterns is make them unique. So in the demo versions of FL Studio 21, you can't do this. OK, that they restrict it from what I remember. Um, they may have updated it, but this is basically what separates the full version from the uh, free version is cloning and saving. So click here and go to make unique. What this will do is take pattern one, it will duplicate it and make pattern two with the same exact characteristics as pattern one. But let's say you want to go pattern one, pattern two, pattern one, pattern two. You see over here, it's this pattern one still. So I'm actually going to click over here in the top left of the pattern, go to select source pattern and make it pattern two. So that's a quick way to make changes. So let's say you have this stuff mapped out, but everything you copied and paste says pattern one. What you can do is hit Control Shift or Command Shift on Mac and select every other one, basically, like this, and then go to the top left and select Source Pattern, Pattern 2. So we'll change all those Pattern 1s that we had to Pattern 2, and it will keep your, you can do it that way. It's just a quicker way to rearrange your stuff. Okay. So if you want to copy and paste the drums, what you'll have to do is hit Control, left click. Because it's not um, locked to the grid, we're going to have to. <laughs> highlight the entire clip, control, left click and highlight, hit shift and then left click. So it keeps the timing at the end. That's very important. If you mess with that timing, it's going to mess up the entire feel for the track. So you can hit control and left click. You would not hit control B. Le control B is something different. Okay, 
so we're going to probably make a dark gritty type track today. Now with the patterns, let's say you want to, let's add some kind of melody in here just so you can hear um, something. So I'm going to add a note just at the end. So let's say you don't want the dun every single time. What you could do is hit Alt and left click to micro nudge this to mask and reveal notes. So what this will do is it only plays what it sees. So if I take it out at the end, it won't play that last note. Okay, so that's how you make little change ups or pauses. Now, if I'm going to do it on a quantized level, I would change my grid to maybe a half beat and just left click and drag so that it's quantized. Hitting Alt is a more nudged micro approach, but you can also have a quantized approach, changing your grid to like a half step, uh, beat, for example. And that way you can just, it's quantized. You don't have to worry about locking it to the grid. So that's how you do that. I'm gonna take out that note because I don't truly like it, but that's what that is. Okay, so I'm making sure I'm on track, make sure I covered everything. Control click. Uh, I can't read my own writing. Okay, I'm glad I read that. Okay, so basically if you control click this black bar up top, this is a loop, okay? So you can loop it. So let's say you just wanna work on a small section at a time, hit control, left click and highlight. You can right click to get to make everything not selected so it looks normal, but it will still be looped up top. And this way you can work on just this section while you're building other sounds. So I think we've completed the playlist, it looks like, from my notes. Okay, so let's move to the channel rack. So the channel rack is where you load up your sounds, basically. So this channel rack is this button right here. It's the third button. I'm skipping the piano roll for now because you don't really get to the piano roll until you have stuff in your channel rack. So the channel rack, we're just going to click this button. And this is where you load up your sound. So I have a piano sound. Load it up. I have an 808. Clap. Hi-hats. So I have my drums loaded up. So the question is, how do you load up sounds into your channel rack? Firstly, with your channel rack, the first thing I would do is switch this to all so you can see everything that's in your entire track. If you record a lot, then this will be a little obnoxious to see like 70 things going down. So it's a little obnoxious. So I think they separated that because if you record a lot, I would switch this to unsorted, which is usually your drum sounds and your plugins. So if you ever get lost and you're wondering where your sounds are, click here and go to all or yeah, that's basically it. So, but we're gonna keep it on unsorted, which are which is everything that we didn't drag into or record into FL Studio. Okay, meaning as an audio clip. So with the channel rack, we are gonna show you how to import samples. So the first thing I would do is once you find your sample, you right click and open in new channel. Um, get in the habit of doing this. You can also hit, you can also right click and hit uh, O to open up a new channel, it's just faster. Um, and that way it just opens up as its own sound. Some people like to left click and drag. The problem with this is that you can accidentally override a sound. Now in the new FL Studio, you can hit Control Z if you do that, but in the older versions, you couldn't undo it. So you would have like a piano and you would drag an 808 over a piano by accident and then hit Control Z and you were stuck with the 808 and you would have to find the exact piano settings all over again. So the way I prevent that frustration is simply right clicking, hitting open in new channel. And that way it just, it's separated and it's all good to go. Okay, so how to open up a plugin. So that's how you open up your drums. How to open up a plugin or something that makes sounds like a piano, you click this plus icon at the bottom here, and then you select from whatever plugins that you have. Now, if you don't see your plugins listed, you would go up to where it says more plugins and you would make sure that you have these starred on the left side. If they're not starred, you're not gonna be able to open them up. Okay, so I just realized I had a plugin I didn't have selected. So you won't be able to open them up if they're not starred on the left side. Okay. And now you'll see I just added a plugin called F2, and now it has it listed, whereas before it was not listed in this piano roll list, or excuse me, in the uh, plugin list. It was not listed. So I just did that in real time. I'm glad that happened because now you learned. Okay, so that's how you open up a plugin. So let's open up um, like a guitar plugin or something like this. I've clicked on the wrong one, of course but it's good enough. Okay, so then we're gonna move to mapping the drums. So I have a piano set, but we already have drums. So I'm gonna mute this for now. Let's go to the playlist and mute this track, meaning turn the entire track off. So let's say we want some hip hop, some trap drums in here. 
let's go to a new pattern. Remember, get in the habit of going to new patterns to do stuff. Okay, so we're on pattern three. And I have all these sounds. Now, the first, first, first thing I would recommend, anytime you pull in a sound into the, the channel rack, hit Control L or Command L on Mac. This will send it to what's called the mixer. And I'm trying not to bog you down with too much info, but you need to organize sounds inside the mixer, okay, to do stuff to it, like edit the sounds, route the sounds, do all this stuff. Basically, it just allows you to separate stuff. Try to keep stuff as separated as possible in FL Studio, okay? So now... I was wondering why I can't hear it. Okay, let's make sure this is like this. Okay. So now we can map out our drums. So we're at 79 BPM. So I'm going to up the uh, BPM to 79 times 2 is what? 158. Okay, so we're going to mute the drums for now. This is at 79 BPM. I'll leave a note so I remember. Okay, because when I do this, it will time stretch. And actually, let me show you something real quick. So for example, if I change this BPM, you see how the audio is moving and it says, do you want to stretch? And I'll hit no. Okay. Or yes, or whatever you want to do, but that's not what I want it to do. So let's pull it back down to 79. Okay. I'll just X out of this. And then we'll go to where it says tools, macros, switch all audio clips to real time stretching. So anytime I have audio and I'm about to change the tempo, I like to do this. Hit okay. And now I'm going to pull the whole beat up to 158. Hopefully I did my math right. So you see how the audio is not moving anymore. Okay. So it will just play faster, but it won't mess up the placement of the audio. So it will sound crazy, but at least it won't move. Okay. So now we can go to pattern three, go into the channel rack, opens up your patterns and you can left click this little thing right here to select between your patterns. So we're on pattern three. If you don't, if you have a lot of patterns and you're not sure like which pattern to go to, you can right click and go to find first empty. And this will just open up an empty pattern for you to get building right there. Let's map some drums real quick. So in FL, you can do something really quick. This is why people love it for trap. You can click anywhere on the right side right here, and then you can right click and fill each two steps. So it just automatically draws out the hi-hats for you. And now when you have that mapped out, what I like to do is go to the playlist now and either left click and drag the pattern in, or I can just left click and drag it in. Man, I could just left click because it enters whatever pattern you're on currently. Okay, so that's why I said get used to it. Um, in this case, we're using the pencil tool. So you see how right here, if I left click and drag this to the right, it's like a weird gap of notes. So just double click and go into your channel rack by exiting out, or you can just click on the channel rack and just left click the edge here. And it looks like we need a couple more notes. So let's just drag these in, okay? And I need a couple more notes. As you can see, it doesn't go all the way to four bars. So let's drag this even further on the right side and add these in. Or a quick way to do it, just right click, fill each two steps. So now I have four bars, in this case, two bars technically, but four bars in this BPM of hi-hats. And I can just left click it in. So now it's all like that. Okay, so now we have this. I like to separate my sounds. So I'm trying to show you good practice. Okay, so let's make like a hi-hat roll. So one, two, three, four, do, do, do. And then premium.busyworksbeats.com. I'll show you how to make beats and all this stuff. We have free courses for you even. Just go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. Right now, I'm just trying to show you the general functions, not necessarily make an entire beat. One, two, three, do, do, do. Okay, so you can right click, go to piano roll. You could take this hi-hat now, hit control A, left click and drag it out. I'll show you. I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing, just explaining it. You could hit Alt U to chop it up and change the time multiplier. Okay, you can go to the bottom here, change this to fine tune pitch, and then you could change the pitch to do a pitch dive. Okay, so that's how you do that. That's for more advanced producers. I just wanted to show you more advanced stuff, kind of in between. So notice I'm separating my hi-hat sounds from my kick drum and my clap. Okay, so I like to separate sounds, high frequencies and those. So let's move to pattern four now and draw in our clap. So if you're confused with how to write drums, turn on your metronome. Um, this will help you. So in trap music, we put the drums not on the one, two, three, four. We put it on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We put it on the three and the seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's, turn your metronome on. Go to pattern mode. But again, we're, we're drawing this in real time. So I'm on song mode and I add my pattern as I'm listening. 
So this is a good habit to get into. So you're not constantly going back and forth. So again, I'm listening to song mode, but we're working on pattern four. Let's go to pattern four here. So it's one, listen to the metronome. Every time it hits, that's considered a beat, like a heartbeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how you draw your drums out a lot faster. Okay. So I'm just left clicking to add these in. Okay, so a good habit, again, whenever you add a new sound, hit Control L to send it to the mixer. If you don't see these, let, these numbers on the left side, hit Alt M to hide or reveal those uh, numbers. Okay, um, so we did send to the mixer. Let's do piano roll. So let's edit some piano. Where's our piano? Why is it quiet? All right. Oh, I have it muted. Okay. Okay. So let's say you want to make changes. What you could do now is just double click on the pattern to go to what's called the piano roll and make small changes. So let's add a melody to pattern two. And let me see. This grid looks kind of weird to me. There we go. Okay, so the notes are only on. I ended up making a beat. I told you I wasn't going to, but might as well. So now what I could do in the mixer, this button here, is start turning stuff down. The problem with most of your beats is that they're too loud. So I start turning stuff down. Turn the piano down. Now we have this. So in the channel rack, let's say you had you. What I like to do is separate sounds from drums. So notice I have the pianos at the top and the drums at the bottom. So you see this guitar is kind of hanging down here. And again, the plugins I'm using do not necessarily come with FL Studio. This is just I'm showing you how to use real stuff. Hit Alt up to move this in the channel rack. So now I have all my instrument stuff in the same area. It's just a quicker way to look. And I like to keep my bass next to each other as well. So I'm not looking all the way around, like the 808's down there and then the hi-hats up there. And this, it's just, I like to keep all my stuff in its own sections. So Alt up and down help you to do that. Um, I showed you how to sort. If you're wondering where your files are, click up here, go to all, or just go to unsorted. Um, adding notes to the right. Uh, basically, you just left click and drag this to reveal more of the channel rack. If you're doing more drums and you want your drums to be longer, that's how you would do that. Um, what else is there? Adding notes to the right, fill each step. I already showed you that. Oh, something you can also do is add what's called swing. Now for this song, it's not gonna sound natural, but you can turn up what's called swing. And this is for more like 90s, 80s style. So listen to these hi-hats right here. It goes like, it just sounds weird. Because like now this I can make swing sound better than this, but swing is for lower BPMs. Uh, let me just show you. It's gonna be hard to understand swing at high BPM. So let's go to like 86 BPM and I'll show you what swing sounds like. Now swing only occurs from note to note, so you're not gonna hear it if you have gapped out notes. It goes ta 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 ta. Okay, so that's swing. You also have what's called the graph editor. Oh, I forgot what was 158 BPM. Yeah. Okay, you also have what's called a graph editor up here in the top right. If you go to graph editor, let's say you just want to quickly edit your hi hats, you could just do it right here. Just left click. It usually starts on velocity. Velocity is like the volume of a sound. So you can make small changes here, um, like this. Now, I wouldn't do that for this specific type of beat, but you can also do what's called time shift. Let's go back to 84 BPM because it makes more sense at this BPM. So you could turn up what's called the swing. Go to graph editor now, mess with the velocity. Okay, so now you get a more realistic playing style. It's not just like ta 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 ta, because in real life, a drummer is going to play at different um, hardness levels. Okay, now we're going to go to the shift tab. And this will do like a micro shift per that specific note. So if you're into boom bap and 
I'll kind of let me show you what this sounds like. Basically, it adds, let me do it this way, a delay per note. <clears throat> so that's how you can make more unique hi-hat patterns like this. Okay, so that's more for like boom bap stuff. You can left click and just drag to reset the um, values or just left click, turn it up like this. Okay, rarely do I use that. It's more for boom bap stuff. Now, if you mess up, and you want to reset, hit Alt and left click to restore. Okay, let's go back to our 158 BPM track that we had. Now in this case, I want to get rid of notes. So I'm going to right click and delete the notes in the channel rack. Now if you want to replace the sound, you can click on the sound itself and just left click and drag. Or you can right click and I believe send to selected channel or focus plugin. So let's say I want to make this snare an 808. I can right, left click on the snare. You see how I'm highlighting it here with the green thing? Okay. Then right click, send to the selected. So it just overrode that snare with an 808. I'm going to hit Control Z because I don't actually want to do that, but that's how you do it. Replacing sounds. You can also right click and replace this with a plugin. So if you want to replace it with a plugin, you can do that quickly here just by right clicking and just replacing it with a different plugin that way. So if you want to, if you have a plugin that you like, I mean, a sound that you like, like MIDI that you like, but you just want a different sound. You can right click and replace it with a different plugin, a different sound. OK, so we have that. You can also clone sounds. So what you can do is just right click and hit clone or right click and hit C. The reason you would do this is because you want to make small changes to the other one or like play a different pattern with the other one and just separate the sounds. So you can right click and hit clone to do that. OK. Um, also for drums, for 808 specifically, I know you guys are mostly in the 808s, you want to make sure you right click and hit cut itself so that the 808s don't overlap. Okay, so that's just a little tip for you, cut itself. Um, pattern pitch picker and, okay, so up here you can left click to go through your different patterns, your different ideas basically. So again, the playlist has all this stuff combined. Let's go to pattern five and let's add the 808. And then I'll show you the piano roll and how to do stuff. So I'm just going to record this. Now what I'm going to do is go to options, typing keyboard to piano. And let's record, hit the record button, hit notes and automation. I'm hitting my comma on my keyboard to play middle C. I'm hitting space bar to hit go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have that long 808. Now you see how I played all those notes, but you only see f a couple of notes. So what you have to do is left click and drag this to reveal. I'm not sure why they have it set like that. Maybe because I, I don't know, not sure why they have it like that. But anyhow, so just double click. And this is what I just recorded. Now some stuff is off beat. So I'm trying not to jump ahead. Give me a second to read my... Uh, Okay, so now we're going to move to the piano roll. And I'm going to hit control Q to quantize the notes. Now, if you want to quantize on a more microscopic level, hit alt Q and then you can pull up these settings. This is more for if you're doing like realistic drums and you need to, you don't want to quantize too sharply. You could do like a micro quantize there, but hit control Q to quantize. It will quantize to your snap to grid settings. So I'll, let's change the snap to grid to one half beat. I like to keep mine on one half beat. Okay, so on the piano roll, if you let me just kind of show you stuff as we're listening in. In the top left, go to where it says, go to the drop down, and let's go to where it says settings. Where is it at here? Hold on. Let's go to view. I don't know why I put settings. I'm going to go to view, and we're going to turn on what are called ghost channels. This is great for if you're stacking up instruments on the same pattern. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's say you have the piano up here and the 808 doing something else. And let's say you just wanna see musically where everything is sitting in the frequencies. You can now see the piano note. It's not there, but it's there. It's a ghost channel, it's called. So you can see the other MIDI that you're using per the pattern. So that's if you wanna get into more music theory stuff. It's a good little trick for you. Also, 
Um, by default, it's not labeled. I don't know why, but because in my opinion, in the piano roll, you need stuff labeled because we're not looking at it like a piano. You would have to turn your neck to kind of see shapes. So when you're working horizontal like this, you need stuff labeled, in my opinion. You can't just quickly tell what's what. So go to the drop down, go to view, and let's go to where it says keyboard style. I like mine on the modern style. And go to key labels. This is more important. Make sure it says all notes because by default, it's set to root notes. And it's like, what note am I even playing? I don't even know what I'm playing. Very badly mapped. I don't know why that's like that by default, but just go to view, key labels, all notes. Very important for modern DAW production to see the notes because again, with a real piano, I can just quickly see shapes because I'm looking directly at the piano. On the computer, everything's sideways. So I would literally have to turn my head to see what I'm doing. And you need to be able to read stuff a lot faster. Okay, so that's that. Told you guys this would be a masterclass in one video. Okay, so that's the view keyboard styles. Okay, snap to grid. I keep my snap to grid on one half beat. It's just what I like. You can change yours to whatever you want, but that's where I keep mine. So you see how the hi-hats are kind of kind of like on the grid? Let's go to the hi-hat itself. Go to the wrench tool, turn up time shift. It will delay the hi-hat a little bit. I'll exaggerate this so you can hear what's happening. Hear how the hi-hat's like super delayed. Kind of sounds cool. Meek mill type, but let's pull this back a little bit. So it's just slightly nudged to the right to where it sounds more, it gives it more breath. I'm gonna do the same thing with open hi-hat, turn up that time shift. There we go, now our drums feel better. Also, I'm gonna do the same thing with the 808. I'm also gonna crank the 808 up, go to the main tab, go to pre-computed effects, turn up boost. If you wanna learn more beat making stuff like this, go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. We have some free courses for you there. Okay. So now let's get into the hot keys for the um, piano roll. So the first hot key, I have everything mapped out. First hot key is when you alt, uh, hit alt and left click anything, it nudges it. Remember, alt in FL is reset and nudge. Okay, so that's the general function of the alt button. Okay, now when you hit control Q, you can quantize. But let's say, let's say I draw a lot of notes like this. That sounds pretty hard, actually. That sounds pretty dope. You can hit control L to fill in the gaps, okay? So to fill in gaps, hit control L. Let's say you have a bunch of gaps, but you don't like the rhythm that you played. You just want it to be played as one big chord. You can hit control L so that the edges touch and then hit control G. As long as the edges touch, it will combine all those notes like that. I kind of like it like this. making a hard beat by accident it's not even wasn't even trying to okay so control l shift left click does duplicate so i can duplicate this way a lot of people tell you control b but what control b does is if i hit control b right now it will offset this entire thing to the next thing and that's not what i want to do okay so what i want to do is just hit shift left click and drag to select notes you can hit control and left click and just highlight notes like this control left click or you can hit if you want to select specific notes hit control shift and it allows me to select and unselect or deselect, whatever the proper grammar is, um, different notes. And that's a little tip for you. So let's say I like a pattern, but it's played too slow. I can hit control, highlight the whole pattern. You'll see these little double arrows right here. And then you hit alt and left click and you can make it smaller to play faster. Even that sounds pretty dope. So I'm gonna duplicate this because that sounds kind of cool and then pull this back to its original shape. Hit Alt. See, I accidentally moved it by accident. Alt, left click. Make sure you hold Alt as you do it or else it will go off the grid. Okay, so Shift, click, this Alt. Okay, right click uh, to delete notes. It's gonna go down my list because these are just shortcuts you should know. Right click, deletes. Um, shift up and down transposes the note. So if, you know, if I don't select the note, it will transpose everything. That's shift up and shift down. It goes up and down. If you only want a certain note to go up and down, you would highlight it 
or hit control or control shift and hit shift up. So I'm moving only that note. Now control up does the octave. So if you want to go up an octave, you would hit control up or control down. Does octave shift up does note by note. You could also do shift left and right to move it. Like if you played it a little step early, you can move it like that real quick. Okay, so shift. Okay, I already went over that. Control shift does a multi-select. I already did that. Double click on a note to make it a slide note. So let's say you want the 808s to slide or do something unique. Now, when I double click in this pattern, this is why I like to separate sounds. So what I'm going to do is separate these because I don't want them on the same pattern. I'm going to hit control X to cut the MIDI, go to a new pattern, hit control V. So now I just separated the 808 from the piano because now when I double click in the pattern five, it will show me the 808. It won't show me the piano that it kept showing me before. So let's say you want to create a slide note. This is, I don't want to go too deep into everything about everything about everything because then it will just take up too much time. But you can add a note here and double click on it and make it a slide note. So as long as the 808 lasts that long, it will slide to that pitch. It goes because it's still playing. It goes but if you change it to a slide note and the 808 still playing, it will go like that. But if it cuts off, it won't just slide nothingness to nothingness. Now we have videos on drill, 808 slides and all that type of stuff. I don't want to get so heavy into the technique right now. Um, so that's a slide note. Alt Q quantizes, but again, it's a micro quantize, whereas Control Q or Command Q um, quantizes to your snap to grid value. Okay, so there are two different things. And then it also quantizes the ending of the note, so it fills out that gap, whereas alt Q doesn't necessarily do that. See, it doesn't quantize the duration. Unless I have it set to that. Okay, quantize, or excuse me, control Q kind of makes uniform note lengths. Okay, so we have control Q, alt Q. If you want to make a chop, um, I usually do this for hi-hats. So let's go to a hi-hat pattern. Let's right click open up our piano roll, just left click and drag it out. Let's highlight this and hit Alt U. This will create a chop. Okay, and you could change the, um, let's Control Z, hit Alt U again. You could change what's called the time multiplier to go faster or slower like this. I like that little sound. It's gonna turn stuff down. If you wanna turn sounds down, I would recommend you get used to turning them down in the channel volume right here. So I wanna turn that down. So it's not as loud. Okay, so let's do the strum tool. So let's, this is great for piano and guitar. So let's say I want this piano to kind of go like this. Like strummed, as opposed to just all at once. You could hit Alt S. This is called the strumizer. And I'm gonna set these to the about here. Now I'll exaggerate so you can hear. It strums out the notes. Okay, that's exaggerated. I don't want it that exaggerated. Just hit accept. These are the settings I usually keep. Also for piano, trying not to go into everything about everything about everything, but we're only on step four out of seven. So we need to keep this thing rolling. Um, so Alt S. Control G groups notes. So I already showed you that. Um, where are we at? Chord stamps. So another thing I want to show you is if you want to make your piano more realistic, hit Alt R. Take off pattern mode, it's called. Make sure levels is turned on and turn up and mess with your velocity. You'll see at the bottom, the velocity is becoming more random. And this will give you a better playing sound. You can go in and edit the notes manually. If you don't see this at the bottom, grab the ellipses at the bottom and drag it up to reveal that the velocity and changes to note velocity down here. So now you have more realistic uh, piano. Now let's say it's cool, but you don't want, I'm trying not to give you everything, but hit Alt X. You could pull this down. So let's say it keeps the relative contrast between the note velocity, but you can pull everything down in volume without affecting each note. So now play softer, but it still keeps the relative shaping of the velocity. So that's how you do that. 
for this uh, type of music, we want to be um, quantized and we want everything to be one uh, velocity. We, want, uh, we don't want it to sound too realistic. That's kind of the point of this piano. It's just kind of gritty sounding. But you can also go to your piano and go to your actual plugin window and you would go to your detailed settings or your settings tab go to the wrench tool you could do the same thing here turn up time shift this will delay the piano just a little bit off the grid so it's not perfectly locked in okay next is chord stamp so let's go to pattern one i'll just do it here um, I'll move this to the side so I don't lose that chord. But if you don't know chords, you can go to what's called a chord stamp or a stamp in general. These have chords and scales. And you can go to where it says chords and pick between your basic chords. A major chord, minor chord, major seventh, major ninth, major seventh, and minor ninth. These are the, basically all the chords you're ever going to really use. The other ones are under the advanced tab. Okay. Um, but you would use, let's do a minor chord. And then I would just need to pick the root note. I would click and it's a whole minor chord. Now, if you notice, all these notes kind of highlight when I hover over them, it kind of flickers into a color. So what we want to hit is Alt G to ungroup the notes. OK, so now I can select each note one by one, whereas if I don't do that and they're grouped. Let me hit Alt G to group them back. OK, so if I try to grab, I think I just undid what I undid. <laughs> it's like Inception. Well, let me do this one more time because it's not giving me the option. Okay, go to minor. Okay, so you see how it's, if I try to select one note, it grabs the entire chord. That's not what I want to do. It does that to keep stuff simple for you, but let's say you want to make little edits. You would have to highlight the note, hit, um, hit control, highlight, hit alt G to ungroup so that I can make small changes. Okay, so that's how you would do that. And I'm showing you little nuances along the way in FL Studio 21. So next is where we at here. I got lost. Okay, group notes, ungroup. So in the bottom left, I showed you if you just grab the ellipses, if you don't see this, pull this up, go to control, note velocity. Here you can change the velocity per note. So let's go to pattern two and you can go up and down and up and down like we did with the hi-hats before. Adds a little bounce to it. Kind of cool i like that keep that okay so if you have midi and you just want to import it into your sound you would open up your sound right click go to your channel rack right click go to piano roll and let's say you want to import some midi you would go to drop down go to file import midi file i don't think i have anything loaded um, but you would go to your file and let me think where i where i put this thing let's go to here here and let's go to here, here, ultimate producer stash out now. Let's go to premium.busyworksbeats.com to find this. I have MIDI and a bunch of it. So let's go to 90s R&B and click anything. Okay, hit enter. So now that's how you import MIDI into your piano roll. Go to, I forgot we're on a guitar. So let's see where we're at. That's how you import MIDI. Okay, so another thing is, let's say you have a note or you want to cut out a note, you would grab your slice tool, hit shift, and you could do chops this way to do vertical slices, like so. But let's say you want to get rid of a note. Let's say, I'll just kind of exaggerate this. Let's say a note kind of overlaps into the next section like this, which will cause FL Studio to play the entire next section. You could just grab your slice tool, hit shift, and then right click, notice it turned red. If I shift and left click, it's blue. If I shift right click, it turns red. And this will get rid of the smallest section of the sound. And it gets rid of that extra little overlap right there. So that's how you do that, just a little pro tip. Um, also, you can control click on the top bar to loop anything. So hit control, left click. You can also right click, but control, if you right click, you can't unloop unless you go all the way back to the beginning like that. But control click allows you to just quickly and you can control click to get rid of the loop like so. All right, now let's move into section five, which is the mixer. This is where you combine all the sounds. Now on pattern four, I have this on our clap track. Let's 
see if that guitar goes with our drums. So let's, this is why I say separate everything, because now what I could do is on pattern that I, let me see, did I delete it or get rid of it? Looks like I got rid of it by accident. Oh, I copied it. Okay. So I pasted it, control V. Now it's on pattern seven and I'm going to left click it in and see if our drums, this is why I separate stuff because now I can now say, okay, this is our 808. This is our clap. Uh, this is our hi-hats. Let's uh, right click and hit R to name this stuff. So this is the hi-hats just to quickly, you could also do it with the pattern left click, hit R to highlight. I mean, to a name that's called highlight. It's called hi-hat, <laughs> right click. It's called clap. And then right, left click and hit R, it's called 808. So now I know which patterns are which, and I can just hit control, shift, highlight these, hit shift to pull them over and left click and drag. So now I have a different vibe with the same drums. Now I can, let's drag the 808 over. It's probably not in the same key, so let's hit shift. Actually, luckily it matches. That's how we have two different vibes per song. Let's left click, call this guitar. So now I wanna mix stuff. So let's send this stuff to the mixer. Um, the mixer is where we organize sound. So go to the channel rack, go to all, make sure everything's in the mixer that you're using. So you see how this stuff has that little dash. We want this in the mixer. Even if we're not using it, hit control L, send that to the mixer like that. So now let's open up the mixer, which is this button here. Again, I'm trying to go note by note, but in reality this is not how you think all the time okay so first thing you could do in the mixer is rename stuff so this is auto named like something random when i record so i don't want this to be like a random it says untitled whatever whatever so let's right click hit r and call this like vocals and whatever try i don't even know what this is but let's call it vocal two and right click let's call this vocal three and you can color these as well right click hit r and you can make it pink or whatever color you want i'm gonna not be that meticulous um but you could right click and if you ever want to reset let's say you have a bunch of plugins loaded up you could just right click and hit e to reset and it will also get rid of the name okay but remember stuff's actually routed to this track so we need to name it to know what's actually here it's not it didn't just disappear from the mixer okay so oops let's call this vocal five and if you want to move stuff around in the mixer hit control to left click and highlight it hit alt right and left to move it around. Same as like the channel rack when you hit alt up and down. Okay, so that will move and organize stuff the way you want. So now all the sounds will play in the mixer. And I can like turn them up, turn them down. I can turn the 808 down real quick. I can turn the guitar down. I can add effects to the guitar. Let's say you wanted to add reverb to your guitar. Do fruity reverb too, where's that? Fruity reverb two. I could add some reverb. Now the guitar is bigger. Now, if you don't see those, these slots over here, click this icon where it says the inspector hide or reveal. Okay. So sometimes you'll accidentally click it and go like, where are my plugins? So that's where you do it. You hide or reveal it right there. Okay. Let's go back. And so that's, so that's how you do that. So to add plugins, you go to your drop down. And it, you go to select and it pulls up your plugin list. I have a lot of plugins. So what you want to do is I would highly recommend you keep this on simple because you could just visually see everything and you'll get used to it being in alphabetical order. It's just the easiest way to look at plugins, in my opinion. Um, and then you could, if you don't see your plugin listed, but you installed it, go to more plugins and you can click anything that you don't see right here. Okay. So I have 1600 effects. So I'm not going to go through all of those. Okay. I also recommend you turn it to compact too. This is based on your style, but I like mine on compact. Wide just looks weird to me. So I keep mine on compact too, but to each his own. Um, that's how you change your view for your uh, mixer. Now this button here, the view extra stereo buttons, I keep it on. Rarely do I use the buttons down here. The one I use is called the stereo button. So basically I can make the piano mono by left clicking and dragging this to the right. That's the only time I really use these buttons. Rarely do I flip the polarity and rarely do I swap the left and right channels. But that's why I keep it here, just to quickly make stuff mono. You don't need this here, but I use it rarely, okay? Keeping track, we have group sounds. So to group sounds, let me see if they added. No, okay, so you can highlight this, left click to highlight all these vocals, for example. 
to highlight multiple. Then you want to go to another empty mixer channel, right click and go to route to this track only. So now all these vocal tracks are now going to this track number 23. We could right click and call it vocals. Now nothing's playing here, so it's hard to like visualize. So what I'll do is show you how to group into a submix, for example. So you can control click all these and then right click the up arrow down here and then go to route to this track only. So now all the sounds in the mixer are going to this track. And this allows me to add other effects without mastering the track, like turn stuff down before it goes into mastering. Now I have mine set up to where it goes out of my computer. So I'll show you what it sounds like. So you see how just well, see how it got distorted. That's because it's going out too loud. So this is why I have all my stuff routed to this track. I can now turn it down. And now you can hear it going through all my analog equipment. Now we're not in the same key with this guitar, by the way. I'm just, I threw in random MIDI. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. I'm trying to remember where we are. Where are we at? Mixer. Okay. So to turn off effects, let's say the, you like the guitar reverb, but it's just too much for now. You can actually go to the guitar itself, which is right here, and then just left click this little green icon. It will turn that effect off to solo effects. You can right click, hit solo. Um, so that's how you turn off effects. There's also a button down here if you want to turn off your entire vocal chain, or excuse me, your entire, I'll do it on my vocals right now. So if I want to turn off all these plugins at once, you click this little icon right here. It just turns off all the plugins and now you hear my raw vocal. And I can now quickly A, B an entire chain of effects and see what sounds better and what sounds worse. So that's how I would do it that way, uh, that way. Okay. Um, recording audio. I have a whole video on how to record audio. Um, it's a little tedious in FL Studio, not the greatest process, but the first thing you would have to do is go to your options, go to audio settings, make sure you have what's called an Osseo device in a uh, PC world. In the Mac world, you would have to make sure you have something you can actually record through. In this case, I have an audio interface. Okay, so I have it set to my audio interface and I have my buffer length pretty low, 128 samples. Now I'd need to click on my actual track that I'm trying to, the channel I want my mic to come through and click the drop down and select where my mic is coming from. So if you're recording vocals, which is half the time, 99% of the time, you would select a mono source. Vocals are not stereo. Mono means solo or one, stereo means full body. Okay, so stereo means like left and right, mono means one, okay? So we're gonna click here and then select your specific input. It's all different depending on what you have set up. Okay, but you need to find out, if you don't know how to use your audio interface, then you need to go watch a tutorial on it. Okay. Okay, so from here, we are gonna set it up. I'm trying not to get into everything about everything right here, but basically you can record through your effects and then record raw. What that means is if you click this little button right here, I can record post EQ, which means everything in, in uh, excuse me, getting tongue twisted. I can record everything, including the EQ, meaning from top to bottom, because the effects work from top to bottom, by the way, I meant to mention that. And so I can record everything and then post EQ or post effects really, to be fair. I don't know if you use EQ or not. I never use this down here, but if you do, then you can record post EQ or post effects. This is just saying post your effects, basically. When the further goes down, it's just saying how much stuff is added to it. I don't want to get into the weeds about that. Okay, so let's record through this vocal chain. To make this more obvious, we'll record through a delay plugin so that you understand what I'm saying. Fruity, where is it at? Delay three. Fruity, 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 delay, 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 delay. Now I'm going to record through all these effects and it will record my voice through all these effects. So that's when you have it set here on the left side to post effects, okay? And I just realized, ah, okay, I just realized something. Okay, 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 okay. Now the next thing you need to do is go to your mic input, go to the bottom where it says the record button here, arm it for recording, okay? Whatever's armed for recording will record in this next step. 
So I have, let me just make this not record over here. Okay, so now let's record some vocals through all these, all these, all these, all these. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> we gotta go to the top, hit record. I like to record audio into playlists as an audio clip. Okay, so let me turn on my delay. Check, 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 so let me so turn let this, me turn so this. Let me turn I'm going to keep it on, but just keep, keep, keep the keep delay, delay lower so it doesn't get obnoxious. So I'm going to mute the first take we did. So I hear myself through. Let me switch this to like reverb. Because this is a little annoying. Okay. So now I can hear myself through reverb. I hear myself through all these effects. But when you record external only, you, you're recording your raw input. You're just hearing yourself through the effects. So let's click on the mic. Hit the record button, same process, record audio into playlist. Check, 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 check. You wanna check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Who gotta check, 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 check. Okay, hit stop to stop. Make sure the record button's off or we'll record again. And now we'll hear the audio that we just recorded, but it won't have the effects on it. So now. Check, 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 check. It sounds dry. There's no reverb on it. Now in FL Studio 21, you can left click this little dot and turn up the volume. Great feature for recording. Check, 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 check. Also, they have new features here. On the left side, you can fade in and out if you have like a click in the beginning or just want to get rid of some kind of pop sound. Check, check, you can check, quickly check, do cross check, fades check. like this. Fade in and fade out. You want to check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Who gotta check, 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 check. Okay, so that's how you do that. And that's the difference between recording dry and recording through effects. Mm -hmm. There's different reasons why you would do that. Um, so that's how that works. I hit a button on my com computer. Check, 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 check. So whenever you have an audio sample highlighted and then you accidentally hit your typing keyboard, check, 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 check. It will play that specific sound all the way through. So if you ever hear like a random background sound, you're like, where is that coming from? That's the actual audio. Okay, so we have the mixer recording instruments is the same process, except, um, well, it's the same process. So let me load up my guitar. And let me move this piano. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out why I put this in my list. Recording instruments. It's the same process. I guess the main difference is you're gonna be monitoring more. So let's turn this on. Oh, I think I know why. Well, we just found a feature. So you can click here and go to on. So now you're hearing my guitar. We can't hear it yet. It's on line one. Okay, so, but if I have this set to when armed, I would have to hit record because now when I hit it, you're not hearing my guitar. You're not hearing it actually make sound. So yours might be like that by default to where it says it only, you can only hear the sound when it's armed. You would have to hit the record button to hear it. So again, another one of those default things where you wonder why they did it that way. But so if you don't hear anything, you could also switch this right here to monitor when just on. So now you can hear your guitar no matter what. Okay, so that's, or whatever your sound is. If you have a lot of live instruments like a guitar that has this constant ringing sound, that would be a good option for you so that you don't constantly hear it on and you don't have to mute it either. So again, there's a lot of stuff to get into. I don't want to get too deep. Um, I showed you how to move tracks around. Just hit Alt. So you see how the piano is kind of hanging by itself. I want it with all the other instruments. So let's hit Alt Left to move it back over to where it was initially. Okay. And let's see where we're at. Okay, dock channel. So what you could do is, let's say you want your vocals separated so that they're not clogging up the entire mixer. You can highlight by hitting control click. 
then you can right click and dock two and move them and separate them to the right. So if you want your vocals like in their own separate section, you could do it that way. You could also set this up as like a send effects section. That's for more advanced people, uh, but you could have it set up that way as well. What else is there to show you? Copy the value. So for example, if I want to move all my audio stuff, my vocals, let's say you can highlight, hit control, left click, and I can left click and pull these so they're all going at the same rate. But let's say I move the vocal by itself, but I want them to all match. You can right click and copy the value and then right click the other faders and hit V or paste the value. So now I can do it that way. All right. And lastly, how to create automation. Um, let's figure out where we want to create automation. Here we go. Let me turn my effects back on. Okay, so let's say you want to aut have automation to where the volume goes up and down. Or like a plugin comes in and it goes on and off. You can go to the plugin, right click, create an automation clip. I'm right clicking what's called the mix level. You can also right click anything. The fader, you can create an automation for that. Um, I wouldn't recommend automating the fader volume. If you're gonna do volume, I would recommend you fade, you create an automation clip for the actual channel volume, not the fader. Um, but so let's say I want the reverb to tone down on the guitar. I can right click, create an automation clip, and it creates an automation clip. The guitar only plays for this half. And I don't know why we're getting staticky, but you could basically turn the reverb on and off. 100% is on, 0% is off, or zero is off. Again, I don't know why it's like glitching like this. All right, so we only have one section left. Wait, two sections left. We're making it, we're almost there. Okay, I don't know what's causing the clicking and popping. Could be my recorder, so maybe because we're eating up so much space. All right, um, so next is we're gonna show you how to open up the browser. The browser is where you find sounds. So I'll move pretty quickly through here because the browser doesn't have a lot going on. Um, to add folders, you wanna go to your options tab, go to file settings, and let's say you wanna import a new drum kit. I would recommend you import the folder that holds all your drums instead of each drum kit one by one. Okay, so like put your drum kits in one big folder and then import that specific folder. You would click on the little folder icon right here and it loads up your uh, file explorer and then you would just add whatever folder and whatever's inside that folder will be added to your um, list here. And you could actually rename it. So you could double click over here and name it a specific thing and name it like, you know, this, let's call this like busyworksbeats.com. Okay, you could hit enter, and now on the left side, you see this just changed the name to busyworksbeats.com. Okay, so that's how you would do that. You can customize that. Um, you can also right click and create a color, so you could change the color, so it stands out a lot easier. If it's a folder that you always click for, or a drum kit that you always click for, you can switch the color. So now I can quickly see this is the folder that I usually click on. You could also right click and change the icon to any of these icons, so I can make it like this quirky looking face. So again, to quickly scan and just see exactly what I need to see. Now, I wouldn't recommend, I can't tell you what to do, but for me, I don't, you know, I only want to mark stuff that's like super, super, super important. So I don't want to mark stuff that I don't need segmented. Okay. Um, next, let's say you want to investigate stuff. You can also right click and open this entire folder. This will open the entire folder where you have the sounds. Okay. So that way you can delete any zip folders or unzip or whatever you need to do. Okay, so that's how you do that. Okay, now the new start system in FL Studio 21 allows you to separate sounds that you like. Um, so you can click, once you have the actual sound file, you can click this little star and it will add this to your start tab over here. Again, I don't really recommend the start way of separating stuff unless it's just a quick sort. I can't tell you what to do in life. I wouldn't get in the habit of doing that though. Um, what you can also do is if you have a really important drum, like what I have here is a drum breaks section. And what I did was I created a folder called drum breaks. So now, you know, that drum breaks folder, I forget where I put it. I think I put it in here somewhere. Here it is. I can right click this and then I can open in a new tab. So instead of me searching 
instead of me doing this, like opening up this folder, then having to scroll down and read and figure out where it's at right here. And then I got to open these up. What I can do now is just right click this, open in a new tab. And in my browser, it will create a new section to where I can quickly just click on here and it goes it's immediately to whatever I need to find the drum breaks in this case. So that way I'm not constantly scanning and scanning and scanning sounds. Very important. I like this feature a lot. Okay, so the search folder, I mean, search feature, I can now search, uh, let's type in 808. So anything named 808 will pull up, but this is a lot of stuff. So let's hit exit to get out of here. And let's go back. How do we get out of search? Okay, we just got to delete this. Okay, and then let's, so what I want to do is only search specific folders. So I can click on a folder and now go to where it says search in selected folder. I can left click this icon and now type in 808. It will only search within that folder. So it won't search your entire database for stuff. It will only search. Um, I just realized the back of this paper says negotiation. That is hilarious. Okay, um, so it will only search that specific folder and the sounds inside, uh, which is really important. So it's a lot faster to find stuff. If you remember where it is, but you just couldn't remember the name or like where it is specifically, it's a good feature. Okay, what else do we need to show you? Tags. I would recommend the tag system, not the star system. So you can right click and now add tags to a sample. I would recommend you do this only for when you're making like your own drum kits or you have very specific sounds um, that you want to sort out. So let's call this like hard drums or something. And then we're going to add that tag to this specific 808. So now what I can do in the bottom left of the browser is go to the tags thing and then click. Did it add the tag? What happened to the tag? Let's do this one more time. I don't know what happened there. Add tag, hard drums, enter. Huh, it's not rereading the tag for whatever reason. I have no clue as to why. Maybe because it's in caps or maybe because I use two words. Let's reread just in case. Maybe that's why. Hmm, I don't know why it's not. It might be a glitch. Maybe we just found a bug. So basically what you would do from that point is go to the bottom left where it says tags and you would click on that specific thing and it will sort out those sounds that have those characteristics or the things that are tagged that way. So again, I'm not sure why I didn't do that function. Probably just a bug. Pretty sure it's just a bug. Um, and then let's do hard. Let's do this one more time. Give it a chance. Yeah, it looks like a bug that we just found. All right. Well, this is the early versions of FL21. I guess there's little tiny bugs in there. So in this case, the starred function is going to work better for you. Hey, you win. You win. What can I say? To refresh the browser, hit refresh. So if you import a folder and it's not showing, just hit the reread button right here. Um, what, you're, what you can copy and what you can't open. Okay. So sometimes you can open stuff in FL. Sometimes you can't. So FL only plays audio. So if you're trying to click on a readme file, it's not going to open up. Okay. Now in this case, it shows you the file pathway, but it doesn't show you the file itself. So it's not going to show you pic actually it does show you pictures. Now this is interesting. So they now have a picture viewer, which is pretty dope. And I'm starting to think my FL just froze on me because this should be playing. There we go. Okay. So now we can play the file from the actual um, browser in the top left. If you go to the drop down and go to Oh, it's actually in the settings. Never mind. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But basically, you can set it to where it plays the entire file or just plays a little snippet. I have it set to where it plays the entire file. Okay, so there's some stuff you can open, some stuff you can't. Like MIDI, I can't just open it. There's nothing to see. Now, in FL, they've added like a little preview of what it, the rhythm looks like. That's pretty dope. You would have to open this in an instrument to hear what it sounds like. So again, you can only hear audio from your browser. If it's a sound font, a MIDI file, a plugin preset, you're not going to be able to hear anything from the browser. Okay. Um, current project. So let's say you make an automation. We've gotten so deep into this. This is probably an hour long video. Okay. So let's say you want to um, right click and change the tempo over time. Let's create an automation clip. And let's say you just change the tempo to something wild like this. Yeah. Forgive the clicks and pops. I'm pretty sure it might be this guitar plugin actually. I think that's what it is. Where's our plugins? Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay. Okay, so you see it's slowing down. Now, if I right click the automation, 
in some versions of FL, it will still slow down. So the way you do it is you go to your project, go to current project, go to patterns, initialize controls, and I can right click and delete the tempo automation. Again, we're there's this is a bug. This should delete, but it's a bug. Well, we just found another bug. Okay, so that will delete and it will um, force your tempo to go back to whatever you have it set to. So if you have that issue, that's how you fix it. Okay, so it looks like maybe I'm recording long and FL is just getting winded. We're pushing it too hard. So again, if you didn't subscribe by now, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe. Again, if you want more in-depth stuff about this, go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. We have over 20,000 folks learning right now, and we've trained over 800,000 producers around the world. On our new platform, it's at 20,000 right now. Okay, so we showed you how to delete. Now let's go into the macro. This is the final, final leg to the race. Whew, you can take a breath. Now, maybe I'll do another video where we actually make beats and like songs. But this video is the most important because now you know how to use FL, which is the first step. Okay, so if you go to your options here, we can go to, um, actually, before we go to options, the metronome is right here. So that allows you to keep time. I would recommend that you have your countdown before recording set on. Um, if you need, if you record a lot of real instruments, I would recommend you right click this and set it to two bars. But right now it's set to a one bar. So this means if I hit record and I'm get, like, getting my fingers ready, I said that, I said the punchline too fast. If I hit record, and I want to record some notes, it will allow me to get my fingers ready um, on the piano, for example, so I can add notes in. So that's very, really important if you're recording um, using a MIDI controller or real instruments. I like to blend my recordings. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds about that, but yeah, I keep that on. And typing keyboard to piano, this icon here, you can left click, so now you can use your, your actual QWERTY keyboard to play notes from plugins and different things. Okay, so we have the metronome, we have the record function. Um, I, okay, so when you record, I keep my, when I'm recording notes, like on a plugin, I go to notes and automation. When I'm recording audio, I record audio into playlists as an audio clip. I don't record everything. And I don't record into the Edison um, thing. And I don't click this button either, because I want it, I want to be reminded every single time. So just that's how I have mine set up. Okay, so pattern versus song. So also if I go to pattern mode, it will only play what's in a given pattern. So if I switch patterns, it will only play the idea that I have in my channel rack. But I like to keep this on song mode for the most part, unless I'm doing something very specific in the pattern mode. Let's turn this up a little bit. Okay, what else is there to show you? <laughs> okay, you could tap the tempo, you could right click, and you could actually tap the tempo. So if you have a beat in your head and you're like, I don't wanna be ever, uh, 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 you could just left click and tap it like that. Um, that's a good way to do it with samples and different things. Tap the tempo. Okay, what else is there to do? The themes, this is new in FL. So if you go to options, go to theme settings, you can switch out the colorways of FL. And I have a video on how to do themes. If you choose the white one, I'm just going to question your sanity. <laughs> okay. Um, I like this one probably the most, and the ultra green is probably my favorite. This one's good, but I need to change the channel rack. I don't like the channel rack colors. It's hard to see the notes. So that's how you change your colors. I like for some, I'm. it's weird. So I'm going to tell you myself for a second, a little anecdote. Even though you can change the themes, I found that the default is actually the best because I just learned on it the most. You have to relearn colors when you change your theme color. So just fair warning, when you change your theme color, you're going to have to relearn like visual cues. So it makes it almost harder by changing the theme. So I actually changed mine back to default, which is hilarious because we begged for it, but then you get it and then you're like, oh, I don't even use it. Okay, go to your options. If you want to set up your MIDI controller, go to the options, go to MIDI. And you have once you plug your USB in, it will be listed here. Click on it and just make sure you click enable. Okay, so that's how you turn on your MIDI controller uh, so you can play notes, play notes and stuff. What chord is this? Anybody who can name that chord gets a fun prize, which is a uh, people liking your comment. Okay, what chord is that? Okay. <laughs> okay, we have the MIDI setup audio. You have to go to options, audio settings. Again, if you're on PC, you're going to go to the ASIO devices. Usually people use the FL Studio ASIO. 
or they'll select their um, audio interface if they have one. In my case, I have an audio interface, which is a device that helps me plug in other stuff. So I have this and I selected that. I keep my buffer length around 128 samples. It's just the best for me doing video um, and using all the programs that I use. Okay, so what else is there to show you? That's pretty basic. Nothing much else to show you. I thought there was gonna be more to show you there. Um, plugin install. So if you go, they changed this. So if you go to options and manage plugins, they like changed it. So you're, at least in this version, nothing pops up. So it took me a while to figure out like, how do we add plugins? So I'm now going to go to the file settings. And when you click on manage plugins, you get this window here. And it tells you that, you know, the plugin manager is open and hit find, whatever. Okay, so I don't know if this is a bug or if this is just how it is now. But basically, you have to go to the plugins tab and then like open this up and you can right click and refresh your plugins from here. Okay, so again, if I hit manage plugins, nothing pops up. I don't know if this is an error or what, but hit refresh plugin list. It should give you a little cue that it's working. Hopefully this doesn't crash FL. Let's pray that we can get our screen back. Okay, boom. So I hit exit just to get out of that function. Um, but that's how you would now scan for plugins. It's a little bit different. Again, not the un, it, they didn't make it really clear how that, that's really working, to be fair with you guys. Go to options, go to, uh, where is it at? Project info. This is where you can enter your name and your all your data. So if people open up this project, they'll see this. If you sit, show info on opening, it will open up like that. And I believe this gets stamped into the metadata, I think. If you do it, this is like a metadata thing. My brain is like, falling apart so we've got to finish this video we've like two more things to show you lastly under the project tab when you hit save i didn't hit save yet on purpose because i want to show you this but this is a new feature in fl studio 21 i have mine set to win saving only so it puts everything into a data folder which is really good for sharing your folders and keeping everything organized so now when i hit file and save it actually pulls up this window so i'm going to call this um youtube video and i can save it to a specific folder so let's open up the folder just make sure it's in the right folder whatever folder you want hit open and <clears throat> excuse me you can click the information to add more metadata here which is the copy from the other tab i just showed you and it says create new project folder yes that's what i want to do and then move files to the created folder hit save so what this will do is keep everything in one place so that your computer doesn't have to search your entire computer to find stuff so let's hit save and now if I go to open, I'll see that it's now, let me go to the bigger folder and you'll see now it has its own folder. Okay, so now when you click in here, it has stuff separated into audio, samples, and the actual project file. So it's separate, it's very organized. I like the way they did that. That's FL Studio 21 in a nutshell. My brain is on 0%. I don't know how long this video is, but please like the video, subscribe if you're new. And go to premium.busyworksbeats.com if you want to learn how to make beats in FL Studio, if you want to learn how to master music production, if you want to learn music theory, I'll show you how to literally create chords knowing nothing. I'll actually show you right now the power. So for example, if you want to make a minor chord, I'm going to close my eyes so you guys can see. Doesn't even matter where I land. You don't even need to know what the note's called. This is the stuff I show you at premium.busyworksbeats.com. So I just happen to land on C. But you would, oh, let me show you. Why am I doing this on my piano? I can show you. Okay, so we're going to open up the piano roll. So I hit this note right here, which is C. All I have to do now is just count up the keyboard. So this is called a chord code. So wherever I land, I hit that note that's considered a zero point. And I'm going to use the chord code 037 to make a minor chord. There are different chord code types. You can go to busyworkspeeds.com slash music theory to get the free chord code chart. Basically, you just count up. So it's zero, then you finish out the chord code. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You play all these notes at once, and that's called a minor chord. Okay, so it works no matter what. And that's the type of stuff that I'll show you in premium. I go way, way, way deeper with music theory, music production, mixing, recording stuff in your DAW. Um, what else do I go over? A lot of stuff. Just go to premium.busyworksbeats.com. We're going to wrap it up here. Thank you. This has been a long journey with you, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you for trusting me to guide you along the way. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video. Peace.